no decision to go forward was made because I said, we'll meet at a certain time before the, and nothing goes forward until we meet. I didn't want anybody doing anything. And when we met, and when we met, they gave me a rough estimate earlier, but I wanted a more accurate estimate. The more accurate estimate were, I won't go into the number of sites, but you've guessed that pretty much right. You have in particular, all right? But it was the number of sites, and it was on average 40 to 50 people in each site. And when they shot down an unmanned plane or drone, I didn't like it. That came from an attorney in the Pentagon and through the, into the White House. No, that came from the, you know, I mean, the estimate came through. Um, it did, biggest. but it was given to me by a general. I had a long talk with Dunford. He's a great gentleman. He was. Dunford did a great job. Dunford is a terrific man, and he's a terrific general. Yeah. I'll be talking about Iran at Camp David, yeah. We have a series of meetings, and more importantly, a series of very well-connected phone calls. We have a great phone system up there, and as you know. So I'll be doing a lot of uh, work. <laughs> we may release it later. We may. Look, Iran right now is an economic mess. They're going through hell. The sanctions have hit them hard. More sanctions are going to be put on, a lot more. It's hard to believe you can even put on, but it's a mess. All I want is no nuclear weapons. Under the horrible Obama deal, he gave $150 billion. He gave him $1.8 billion in cash. Think of that, in cash. Many plane loads of cash. Gave him $1.8 billion in cash, and he got nothing. But the thing he really didn't get was good inspection rights, because the most primary places you couldn't go to, you couldn't inspect. We haven't seen them in years. The other thing he didn't get is time. Because in a very short number of years, they will legally be able to make a nuclear weapon. That's unacceptable. And remember this, the deal wasn't even ratified in Congress. It never got proper, in terms of treaty, it never got proper authorization from Congress. So with all of that, it was very important to me. So we'll start all over. We could have a deal with them very quickly if they want to do it. I, it's up to them. But if Iran wants to become a wealthy nation again, become a prosperous nation. We'll call it, let's make Iran great again. Does that make sense? Make Iran great again, it's okay with me. But they're never gonna do it if they think in five or six years they're gonna have a nuclear weapon. I know too much about nuclear, a lot about nuclear, and let me just tell you, they're not gonna have a nuclear weapon. If that's safe, and it has very little to do with the oil, because again, China gets its oil 91%, Japan gets its oil 60%, Indonesia, so many other countries. What it has to do with, very simply, is the fact is we're not gonna have Iran have a nuclear weapon. And when they agree to that, they are going to have a wealthy country. They're gonna be so happy, and I'm gonna be their best friend. I hope that happens. I hope that happens, but it may not. It was 10 to 15 casualties instead of 100 to 115 ca casualties? Uh, it, it's, anything is a lot when they shoot down an unmanned, okay? So anything's a lot. Sure. I didn't like it. Well, I didn't like it. Not have to reflect that on it. Say it. If they shoot down another unmanned drone, we'll, we'll see. But I don't think that'll happen. I don't think that's happened. And if you notice, there was a plane with 38 people yesterday. Did you see that? I think that's a big story. Is that accurate? They had it in their sights and they didn't shoot it down. That was accurate? I think they were very wise not to do that, and we appreciate that they didn't do that. But they had a plane in their sights, 38 people on the plane, and they didn't shoot it down, and I think that was a very wise decision, and, and I think that's something that we very much appreciate. Right. And didn't have a fully formed no. estimate on casualties? No, they brought me a great plan. But I wanted to know at the end, I wanted an accurate count. They gave me very odd numbers. I wanted an accurate count as to how many people would be killed, how many Iranians would be killed. And as I said, coming from New York, I know a lot of Iranians. They're great people. Thank you very much. Thank you.
It's always on the table until we get this solved. Yeah. We have a tremendously powerful military force in that area. It's always on the table until we get this solved. Thank you. President Trump there moments ago uh, before he's to board their Marine One on his way uh, to Camp David, touching on a number of things based on all the questions that are being asked on Iran. Um, we, get, we got a little bit of a window into the sequence of events. He said he learned that there would be about 150 people, Iranians, who would be killed. And so he didn't think that that would be proportionate. He said they were targeting uh, something without anyone on it, meaning the U.S. unmanned drone. We want to be proportionate. However, he did promise that more sanctions might be coming. And then, of course, he uh, also touched on the ICE uh, rounding up of illegal uh, immigrants in the new week. Uh, he gave very little detail about how that was going to be carried out, but he said simply, if they came into the country illegally, they will be taken out of the country. And then he also responded to the 16th now woman uh, with allegations of either uh, sexual assault or inappropriate uh, behavior. He said, quote, I have no idea uh, who this woman is. Let's bring in CNN's Sarah Westwood at the White House now. Uh, so the president, rather loquacious there, a little over 20 minutes to answer all of those questions, giving us a very tiny window into his thinking on all of those topics. That's right, Fred, filling out the timeline a little bit more as to what happened the day that he was considering a military strike against Iran. There had been some questions as to how in the president's retelling he didn't learn until 10 minutes before the attack was to be initiated that the anticipated casualties ranged as high as 150. So President Trump saying that, in fact, he did get other estimates of potential casualties from his attack throughout the day, but that 150 number was given to him later in the day because he says that he pressed for a more accurate accounting of the number of Iranians that could have died in that attack. President Trump repurposing his campaign phrase, claiming he would like to make Iran great again economically by removing the sanctions if they would just agree not to make more progress on nuclear weapons. I asked President Trump how much more progress he was willing to let Iran make toward a nuclear weapon before he intervened. He said very little, suggesting that he wants to negotiate his own version of a nuclear deal with Iran if they would just be willing to come to the table. It's a very similar argument, by the way, that he's using with the North Koreans, which is that they could unlock a certain level of economic prosperity if they were to give up their uh, nuclear weapons arsenal. And the president also, as you mentioned, touching on those accusations from the columnist E. Jean Carroll, the allegations of a sexual assault that took place more than two decades ago, President Trump continuing his emphatic denials that that ever took place, claiming that this woman has also accused other men. And indeed, in that New York Magazine piece, Ms. Carroll also accused former CBS head Les Moonves of sexual misconduct. He's also denied it. And President Trump touching on those ICE raids, saying that those would take place over the next several days into next week. He would not give an estimate of how many undocumented immigrants that Immigration and Customs Enforcement will remove, but he also called on Congress to address immigration laws so that there wouldn't be a need to remove as many undocumented immigrants in the future, Fred. And, and Sarah, uh, quickly, I'm not sure if there was more clarity or more confusion on the sequence of events about this Iran operation based on what we heard the president say, because it almost sounds as though uh, he was underscoring that the decision had already been made and then the question was asked how many people and then he was briefed on how many potentially uh, would die and then uh, he stopped this operation from happening. Is that what he was saying? Well, he sort of muddied the waters a little bit, Fred. In his initial telling when he came out on Twitter, and he acknowledged that this has happened. He at first said that he had ordered the attack 10 minutes before it was set to start. He said uh, that he learned the number of casualties. In this new retelling, he said that no decision was made, that he continued to press for accounts of the casualties and got different updates throughout the day. And when he received that 150 number, he decided not to make a decision at all. So a little bit different telling of events here, Fred. All right, Sarah Westwood, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more clarity on that because we know so many of our military experts have said usually when a president is briefed about an operation, first off the bat is what the potential casualty. It wouldn't be something that a president would have to request later.